Hey everyone, doing something a little different for Gemini season to celebrate, you know, in honor of my birthday on June 9th, I'm giving a gift to you guys. Um, now I've done all this by elemental sign and it covers your sun, moon, Venus, rising, ascendant, and north node energies for Gemini season. I will be pulling for an energy assessment, the masculine and feminine energies, um, some oracles, and then we'll end off with some advice from the triple goddesses. So this is for earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and we'll get started. And if you like this, hit the like button. I'm thinking of doing this every single week. <laughs> All right. Our feminine energy, we have the muses, inspiration, and for masculine, we have Osiris, the shadow side. All right. Why is she not? There you go. The Muses, Inspiration, Origin, Greek. Start looking around for inspiration from unusual places. The Greek Muses are planting sparks all around you. You just have to open your eyes to find them. Osiris, Renewal. Pay attention to your need for rejuvenation and renewal, both physically and mentally. You are invited to experience the magic of hope. Perhaps one of the most enduring gods of resurrection, Osiris, husband of Isis, is one of the key members of the Egyptian pantheon. Son of the earth god Geb and Nut of the sky, Osiris developed into a god of death and rebirth after his own violent death. The story of Isis's love and devotion to Osiris after he was killed and dismembered by his brother Set is central to Egyptian myth. After his murder, Isis traveled the earth looking for the pieces of Osiris. She then cast a powerful spell which brought her husband back to life long enough to conceive a son, Horus. Then Osiris retreated back into the underworld as a deity of resurrection Osiris gave hope to all that there was an afterlife and that death could be transcended. Osiris did not judge the dead. He also was responsible for their afterlife and reincarnation. As a result, the energy of rebirth and renewal is more tied to Osiris than the other lords of the underworld. Complex magical processes, rituals, and rites were created with Osiris as the central figure to ensure a successful resurrection after death. Depicted with green skin to signify his role as the force behind germination and fertility, Osiris ruled over the flooding Nile and budding crops. Osiris can be called upon when you need to be renewed. When you are tired, physically or mentally, his energy is nourishing and magical. When you feel like there is no hope, particularly after trauma or a difficult relationship, his presence is soothing. Osiris also appears when there is a conception or transition close at hand. On the shadow side, if we push ourselves too hard, destroy our bodies, pay no heed to the fertility of our relationships, sometimes it becomes too late or too difficult for complete renewal. Pay attention to your own self-care, your own rejuvenating power, and should you need to, take time to rest and repair. A retreat is often called for when Osiris visits. The chakra we pulled is number four, grounding. Earth star chakra. You have attracted this card into your world today as a sign that it's time to get grounded. You may have been feeling a little scattered with your thoughts and feelings and finding it difficult to focus and concentrate. Maybe you're feeling stressed and busy due to the many demands on you and are finding it difficult to create and manifest positive outcomes and experiences in your life. Know you are not alone. This is a very common feeling and it is easy to get caught up in the whirlwind and craziness that surrounds you. There is a light at the end of the tunnel for you and the best thing for you right now is to get centered and grounded. The most powerful way to do this is to align with and reconnect to the beautiful Mother Earth. You're encouraged to take some time in nature, connecting and receiving the abundance of energy and magic she has to share. 
This is the best medicine for your soul right now. You may like to spend, spend some time at the beach, go for a walk in the bush, visit a lovely waterfall or a favorite place in nature where you feel at peace. Sit on the land and feel yourself completely grounded and centered. When you are grounded, you feel a deep connection to yourself and everything around you. The affirmation of this card, my energy is completely grounded into the healing energy of the earth. Our message from the mermaid is decisions. It's time to make an important decision. Consider your choices carefully, then act. You might be pleasantly surprised by the outcome. Pondering her options, this mermaid knows she can swim in any direction, and the choice is ultimately hers. She knows her decision could affect others, so she spends some time thinking carefully about everything before she fully commits to a positive course of action. It's easy to procrastinate when it comes to making important decisions in life. We never really know how destiny will manifest as a result of our choices. If you're finding it difficult to come to an important decision, it would be wise to consult the oracle using one of the more in-depth spreads and or a trusted friend who has your best interests at heart. Speaking with a counselor might shed some light on the matter for you too. This card could also be telling you that someone you know is having to make a difficult decision and they may require your wisdom and or and advice. If this is the case, ask the person to list all the pros and cons of their options, then work through the decision-making process together in a methodical way. Try to keep any strong emotions at bay during this time, as it will help them, or you, to see things more clearly. When this card appears in a reading with the Contemplation or Hope cards, which it didn't, <laughs> the meanings of both cards are amplified. Any decision you could make have a, happy, a very happy outcome, so stay positive and look on the bright side. Trust in your destiny. All is well. Message from your animal spirit guide the octopus practice shape-shifting by altering your physical appearance and mannerisms to become adept at shape-shifting it's necessary to remain flexible and resilient and be willing to practice different identities by altering your way of dressing your hairstyle your demeanor and your mannerisms particularly focus on your body language and voice qualities experiment by first making small changes in any of these aspects and watch what happens. You can also become skilled in modifying your aura, the energy field around you, by intentionally con contracting and expanding it. When you practice these things, sometimes even your friends won't recognize you. You can even get so good at camouflage that you become invisible to others. Everyone has numerous personas through which they operate, and you're no different. It's a matter of being conscious of those personas and modifying them through the art of shape-shifting. Just like actors do, study other people and notice their mannerisms, clothing styles, and how they walk and carry themselves. Observe animals and their behaviors and try to mimic them. Developing this ability can help you more readily adapt to the various situations you encounter, thus enabling you to deal with them more effectively. Let yourself be an actor in your everyday life and have fun with it. Just remember who you are at the core. And your soul lesson is love. I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. You are love. It is your inherent vibration. The obstacles and challenges of the physical dimension attempt to trick you into thinking that there are other ways to view life. But there is only one way that is natural to your being, love. This card simply reminds you that your soul is made of the divine's pure vibrational force of love and that you need to bring this awareness to bear on every aspect of your life and being. Love is a healing energy. All anxiety and drama cannot exist in the aura of love. Most souls have come back upon this earth to learn, accept, and utilize this harmonic force and to see its effect upon their lives. It is your time to remind others of the strength of their own power of the divine and assist them in knowing fully that love is the most powerful element 
in the universe. It builds, fortifies, and strengthens even the most lost person. When we live in the power of love, then and only then will we know the truth. True love is the spiritual link between us and the divine. It will guide our footsteps through the conflicts of the material world and will cleanse our hearts of unwanted facets of the human personality. And your advice from the triple goddesses. I'll go ahead and show you that. There we go. All right. Abundance of Sothis. Abundance in many forms is increasing in flow to you. Continue your good work of building channels through which abundance can be delivered to you. Freely share your talents, love, wisdom, and self, and enjoy the abundance of responsi responsibly flowing to you in many forms over and over again. From Hecate. Let me pick up the card. <laughs> I love this one. Speaking of which, good reminder. Come on now. There you go. Potent potions. Today the witch makes you a wondrous potion in the etheric realm. A brew to bring energy, focus, and intent. With every drop you drink this day, feel calm, vitality, and joy. And with that said, I'm going to take a sip of tea. And last but certainly not least is Diana speaking through the Moonology deck. Nice. New moon in Libra. A new romantic cycle begins. All right, guys. Have a good one.